Over the last 24 hours, Bitcoin has plunged into the danger zone. So what does this mean for Bitcoin and cryptos in the short term and the long term? Where are we going from here, especially ahead of earnings seasons in the US with the stocks on the S&P 500 and NASDAQ coming out in the next one to two weeks, some of the big players. So let's dive into that analysis today by first hitting up that like button and click the subscribe if you haven't already. Remember, this is a YouTube video, so I do suggest looking at the video description. There is a ton of information down here. I'll leave some more data for massive specials and bonuses going on for Bybit and BitGet for a limited time. Uh, some free USDT giveaways for $100 deposit bonuses. Details will be in the video description. Enough of the shills. Let's start with the first things first, being the earnings season, what's coming out next week for the US. This is going to be the headline uh, that are going to start taking effect probably in the coming days if they haven't already, because we have a lot of the major companies coming out with their earnings. Just like we saw recently, Wednesday, there was uh, Tesla, there was IBM, we had AT&T, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So next week, there are a few bigger names here. There was Google. I saw Meta as well. Uh, Amazon through here. So you've got some of the big platforms talking about their earnings next week. And what we saw in 2022 was a lot of misses and the market was expecting much further downside. Yet, it seemed to have bottomed around the June and October lows of 2022 for the S&P and for, the, for Bitcoin was that significant June low and the FTX collapse low in November. Since then, the markets have all rallied like we've looked at yesterday, 25% for the s and uh, 19% for the S&P, 25% for the NASDAQ and around 80 or so percent for Bitcoin. So how is this going to wipe out some investors? Well, it's a little tongue in cheek, but there are a lot of people still sitting on the sidelines. We know that from the amount of funds that are still sitting in bank accounts and the differences between the money invested in stocks and bonds. But this is the latest narrative that is spreading across the S&P or at least the financial sector looking at few stocks have outperformed the S&P 500 index recently. So the fear here, which is keeping a lot of money on the sidelines and potentially leading them to miss out or try and short the market when potentially we go up. This is all just speculation on that side. But in terms of the objective data, which is right here in front of us, this has shown in the past to be a bad time to be getting into the market. So it's warranted. You would want to sit out on the sideline if this is the only thing that you're looking at. So what it means is there are fewer stocks outperforming the S&P in the index. And each time this has happened, like you can see here for 1999, 2000, it was somewhere around a peak. And every time you have a look at some of these uh, lower points here, you sort of get quite close to some of these peaks. And right now we're at one of the lowest points that we've seen on this particular index reading right here. However, when we look a little further down, few stocks are driving the S&P higher. This is less stocks are really there pushing the market up itself. But even so, there were no double digit losses over the next year. So when you start to pull apart all of that data, it's not such a bad outcome when you look at over 100 years or sorry, 95 years getting up to that point now of data and how the market has performed after that point. Stocks were definitely volatile after some of the signals. I think all of us can expect some volatility next week, especially with the earnings seasons coming out or all the reports of the earnings. Several suffered large drawdowns. We're definitely going to see that just like we saw with Netflix missing the mark and, and dropping there at various points in the next year. But the S&P still showed median gain of nearly 9%. So it's higher than random. But looking at this, the S&P has showed a median gain of nearly 9% during this period, especially when the stocks are still, a uh, few stocks are driving the S&P. This is on top of the other data that we have looked at for the presidential cycle, which has shown 13 to 16% gains in the third year of the cycle, which is what we are currently in. Next year is the fourth year, which is the election year. On top of many other factors that we have looked at, especially with the first 35 day signal, the first 90 day signal, all those sorts of things that we've already looked at on the channel. So make sure you are subscribed and like the content. Of course, this is your macro cycle analysis home. All right. So that's one of the big reasons there that I can see why there is there's still money sitting on the sidelines. Some of the money is trying to short the market, which we've already looked at before. And 
eventually this is going to push to the upside. We're climbing that wall of worry, uh, which we've also looked at when it comes to the news headlines. The fear and greed here for the S&P. We haven't seen anything extreme for some time. So the last, the last time we saw some extreme uh, emotions were, of course, March through that collapse of the banks. And also the peaks here, at least on the reading, were was back in late January and early February. But for now, we're still in this range here between excessive optimism and excessive pessimism. So we're between the 80 and the 30. And what we've also seen from the model is that the market drops into pessimism as the market is climbing higher and higher. And then at the lows, you can see that the trend itself has started to try and peak its head up into that excessive optimism. So it drops into pessimism on the way up and then on the way down is uh, rising into that optimism. The main thing I'm focusing on here are the higher lows that are forming in the market sentiment. You can see we've had higher lows going from the pessimism up into the neutral zone. Meanwhile, the market is basically forming a rounding bottom. The smart money, dumb money confidence spread also shows a similar sort of pattern. You can see here the market is rising with some pretty significant falls in between, but it's also continuing to rise there into the peak of early 2022. And then we had the bear market of 2022. The market has risen from that point, but is now hitting a resistance level. But what I'm seeing in the confidence market dropping. Yes, we had a big spike there. That was COVID. And then the market dropped back again underneath the negative 0.25. So being under negative 0.25 is excessive optimism. And so it's remained there while the market was heading up. And that seems to be what we are in again. The excessive pessimism is above 0.25. So that's this green line here. It's almost inverse what you would expect. You expect pessimism to be red and green to be optimism. Nonetheless, it's the opposite. So the green here is excessive pessimism. And so that has occurred through the top and on the way down and is now starting to roll over and looks like we're heading into more of these type of seasons that happen earlier on in those bull markets. Now, it's not exact. There are spikes in between. That's typical because we get volatility within the market sentiment itself. But for now, it looks like we're starting to roll back under the negative 0.25, which is into the excessive optimism. Uh, broadly speaking, typically shows, at least in the last six years, a move into that bull market territory. This is just from the low. It's not the crazy bull market feelings that you get at the top of the market, but the starts of them from the lows. Moving across to the chart of the S&P, yesterday we were down 0.47 following a 0.1 loss as well. That's essentially just these two tiny red days here. Now, if I throw on a few lines to give us a look at some of the support and resistance, this is still the zone of me showing that I'm cautiously confident in the market going up. It looks like we are continuing to push up on the back of a wall of worry. We've covered many, many bullish reasons now. And yes, there continues to show up many bearish reasons. However, they seem to be on the back burner for many investors at the moment, or at least the smart money, the silent money that is getting into the market. Some of these reasons have been pointed out by you guys here. And I wanted to mention this because it's a valid point that you can think that TA is only assuming the last 10 years. This is completely untrue. The TA, the rules used in the analysis here, are based on over 100 years of data. It is a GAN swing indicator. This indicator came out in the early 1900s, printed on a chart by GAN, by pencil. So Mr. GAN did it in pencil and pen on his own hand-drawn charts. That's the supporting evidence of the swing indicators in the 50% levels, among other things. So looking at Bitcoin and the S&P, this is based on many years of data. Looking down to the support levels now for the S&P, looking at around 4,060 points. That's the level that I've got my eye on for the short term for any sort of pullbacks, especially during next week and the following week when we get some of those earning reports come out. Should we fall back further, we do have many other levels here. We can go back to 39. You've got the lows here at 38.50. And if we start to use the 50% level to the uh, the banking crisis low, you've got around 4,020. So plenty of support to the underside of the market, especially as it's made up such good gains to the upside on the back of a big 
bearish event of the banking crisis. Now onto Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So it's kind of similar when it comes to the market sentiment at the moment. It's what we've been looking at with the market sentiment, the fear and greed index becoming a little more volatile. Like we can see over the last couple of days, we've gone from 69 down to this low uh, of around 52. And I dare say today's gonna be a little lower again. Nonetheless, the main thing here is the trend. The trend is volatile and it is pushed down from the resistance at around that 70 uh, point level down to in the 50s, which is in the neutral zone. So this is typical of the market going up. We've seen that many times before. And so what we're looking for now is some sort of support to come out at around 40 on the index. That's possibly where we'll see a low or at least a grind along in price for BTC. Remember what we looked at previously when it came to buy zones. So this is gonna be an important part moving forward. 10th of February, this is just a little shill to my Twitter account here. I talked about Bitcoin under 22,000 is a great buy zone. I was especially looking at that zone, buying up for my super fund, which I do sometimes post about on Instagram as well. So the uh, amount of money in my retirement fund. Bitcoin under 22K is the buy zone. That was dead on this period here as the market started to break down and I tweeted right there. So below that level of 22K, I figured was a very good support zone, especially with what had just uh, happened in the market with the market booming up from there. Now, of course, we did come across and reach that level again, but every time we went under that 22, it wasn't for very long. And in yesterday's video, I talked about any prices around that sort of 21 to 22K uh, underneath that is more than likely, I think, a missed opportunity by investors sitting on the sidelines. So it's not necessarily all the investors are going to get wiped out, but sitting on the sidelines sort of makes you feel like you've lost and you typically get into this mind frame where they start to buy up higher and then you get these pullbacks and that's what we've been looking at here. We did get a pullback here, short term remember, because the market wasn't able to push any higher and it got back into this yellow uh, danger zone. And so the point of the danger zone is that if the price wasn't able to hold above the previous tops, which of course is our 100 years of data here, the GAN swing indicator, not the 10 years of uh, Bitcoin data or 13 years going underneath the swing tops is not a good sign, at least in the short term, because it's showing that the buying has come to an end. And being under this particular level, especially under the bodies of the candles, if you're choosing that, is a much weaker sign to show that the market needs more time now to accumulate and decide where the next low comes in. So to the downside, you've got 27,200 and the next swing bottom here is 26,500. All this is doing is just buying more time for the market to decide whether we get marked up or marked down. It's the typical Wyckoff pattern, which also has over a hundred years of data. Remember Wyckoff was around in the same time as Mr. Gann, this is Mr. Wyckoff. And the market essentially just goes through an oversold, mark up, overbought, mark down, uh, rinse and repeat that you see happen time and time again. And so if you get marked up and the price isn't able to, to maintain those levels, what has to happen? <laughs> the pendulum swings and we come back into that zone. That's the short term. As for the longer term, nothing has changed yet. I don't expect anything to change, but at the end of the day, I don't know what's exactly going to happen on the black side of this chart, the right hand side. All I can do is assess what I think is going to happen have a bias because you need a bias to be able to enter the market, whether you're buying or selling, and understand your time frame as well. My short-term bias is to the downside now that we have broken underneath the uh, 29.2 and then under 28.4. So it's without a doubt that the short-term bears are in control. But for the longer-term chart, the longer-term bias, it's still to the upside because none of the significant levels have been taken out. Now, I bring up this 22K zone because we have fallen into this period here. And a lot of the questions then are, is now a good time to be buying? I think somewhere, if you get any sort of wicks into the zone between 25 and 26 and a half, seems to be a reasonable area. We have to wait and see. I'm not telling anyone to go out and buy. Of course, there's no financial advice here. Just my thoughts on the market based on the data and the facts of the charts. Uh, but anything in that sort of zone for now seems like a pretty reasonable area. That's even if it gets there. Maybe we just hold up above 26.6, which is uh, the FIB level here from the um, banking crisis low to the current top. 50% level comes out dead on those previous tops at 25,300. And the 61.8 is basically at the exact lows here at around 26.6 to 26.5. 
So in terms of timing, it seems like this is around that point. Nicely pointed out by Michael, my brother, in our TIA premium group here as we look towards the 140-day counts, which typically put in uh, significant turns in the market. And this was posted out, if you can see back here, on the 6th of April. So looking for a turn in the market, which happened just a week after this point here. So pretty good timing in terms of GAN cycles as well. But for now, in terms of price, we have to see whether the market is going to hold support at 26.5 or if it's able to come back and test 25.3. It's a bit of an up, down, sideways scenario now because it seems like, at least for the short term, the time has run out to the upside. This is where the bears get their day. I suspect they'll get loud again, but I don't know if they'll be able to get as loud as they did during that banking collapse. Let's wait and see. Each of the downsides now have become less and less. I suspect the next downside is going to be less than the previous downsides. But who am I? Just a guy on YouTube. Make sure you like it up, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, and you know what to do. Links in the top of the video description. I'll have the details about those bonuses for Bybit and BitGet. Free cash on offer there, limited time. Thanks once again, guys. Have a fantastic weekend. I'm going to do a free diving course tomorrow, so no video tomorrow on Saturday. Let me know if you've got any tips about free diving. Leave them in the links down uh, in the comment section down below, and I'll see you at the next one. Till then. Peace out.